Who was the toughest guy you went against this year? Um, probably the dude from Tennessee. Darn all right, huh? Yes, sir. He was really good. He's he's legit, isn't he? Yeah, he yeah. is. Man, do I feel good about the first round? What an insane roller coaster day one of the NFL draft was. It's so funny seeing the exact same negative fans that said last year we needed to protect Justin Fields are mad that we got him a new bodyguard because that is exactly what Darnell Wright is. He is Justin Fields' new bodyguard, a dominating right tackle who is just as good against the run as he is the pass. He's insanely powerful. He's a tone setter who plays with a physical demeanor that other teams feel well after the game ends. This isn't even mentioned in his 9.47 RAS score and the highest athletic score in the entire draft for any offensive lineman. Talk about athletic freak, Darnell Wright is definitely that. He has superhuman functional strength and his anchor is as powerful as anyone I've seen in the last three plus years. He also has awesome burst off the line of scrimmage, an awesome kick step and jump step, and he plays just violent. He finishes people off and he loves the pancake defenders. He has the quick footwork and nice arm length, but something here that's extremely rare as well. He has almost 34 inch arms, but he has the wingspan of a guy with much longer arms because he has this massive frame with extremely broad shoulders, which gives him more range than most people with 34 inch arms. So it's almost like his arms are even longer. He is built to play offensive tackle. He has the agility and burst to get to the second level effortlessly, and he destroys linebackers and DBs on the move. He has enough quickness and foot speed to handle elite edge rushers, and his balance and anchor shut down bull rushes. He has heavy hands and awesome grip strength. On top of that, he's a leader and a hard worker who got better every year. He was loved by his teammates and his coaches based off the interviews I've seen, Chicago will love this dude. What are his weaknesses? I saw him reach and lunge a few times on tape, but it's kind of rare. His hand size isn't elite for his size, and he needs to get better at using leverage and playing more aware in the run game. He dominated as a run blocker, but he mainly used his power and grip strength to take guys out of his play. His technique is very advanced, but it's not perfect. He can get even better, which is kind of scary. Darnell was a five-star recruit. He's six foot five, 333 pounds. He has 33 and three-quarter inch arms with an 82-inch wingspan. He has nine-inch hands and ran a five-second 40, but had an elite broad jump. He was a unanimous first-team All-SEC selection. He didn't allow a single sack the entire season. At Tennessee, he dominated guys like Will Anderson. Nolan Smith, Trayvon Walker, and B.J. Ojolari, as well as other highly touted pass rushers. He played 2,756 total snaps at left tackle and right tackle in college. He played right tackle for Luke Getze at the Senior Bowl, and he was voted the player of the week for the team. He dominated all week long. He got along very well with Luke Getze and Chris Morgan, he also wanted to be a bear. What is not to love about this dude's game? Look, you don't even have to take it from me. Let me give you a take from the most respective offensive lineman analysis there is, one Brandon Thorne. He had Darnell Wright as one of his guys this year as well. He said the special traits of Darnell Wright are that he has elite level power and a special blend of size and balance. Special. His concerns were that Darnell had only one season of dominant level play, and he can be too aggressive at times. He then added that Wright played his best football in 2022 against the best competition that he faced, while also bringing a tone-setting demeanor with the size and natural power to create immediate displacement in the run game and play strength and balance to anchor on command. Anchor on command. Those are powerful words. Wow, thank you, Brandon Thorne. Key point from that, Ryan Poles said some of the same things, including calling Darnell Wright a tone setter. 
Here, let Ryan Poles tell you what a tone setter is. Ryan, you said that Darnell's a tone setter. What yeah. is that tone you want him to set? He is a, he's a nasty dude who, when you watch the tape and be like, all right, we got to play the Bears next week, you go, okay, like this is going to be a long day. Boom. A guy who quite frankly sets the tone for how physical the offensive line is. Guys who play angry and violent and leave defenders not wanting to play them again. Tevin Jenkins is a tone setter. Other guys play more physical when they line up next to him. Darnell Wright gives us another tone setter. He makes our run game even more dangerous while also finally giving us possibly an offensive line that is good at pass blocking as well. He will have some growing pains as a rookie, but I expect him to be a plug and play day one starter who's not only starting, but instantly upgrades our offensive line unit as a whole. Darnell was the right pick for the Chicago Bears. Now, I feel a lot more calm and relaxed about the rest of this draft. Yes, we have more needs, but our other positions of need all have talent into day three of this draft. We need a defensive tackle, a defensive end, a cornerback, and a center. We can get good players at all of those positions today and tomorrow in the draft. We also took care of our number one need, right tackle, and stabilizing this offensive line for Justin Fields. This helps surround Fields with talent. Sure, Poles could have stayed at pick number one and taken Jalen Carter, but instead, he's doing what all the naysayers say he wouldn't do, protect Justin Fields and give him weapons, just like I've been talking about all offseason. He gave him Darnell Wright and DJ Moore already, and he's not done yet. Honestly, this pick was perfect in my opinion. The evaluation process is tough, but for the last 10 days or so, I've been honing in on Darnell Wright. Everything about him just screamed bare. I really liked this dude at Tennessee, and I loved him at the Senior Bowl too. I just went back and rewatched a couple of my Senior Bowl videos from a couple of months ago, and you could hear the excitement in my voice when I talked about Darnell Wright. He is a beast. If Braxton Jones can improve like I think he can, he was already a top three run blocking tackle in the NFL, but he gave up seven sacks. If he improves his anchor and strength, we have our bookend tackles and quarterback for the next decade or more. Wow, what a crazy night it was. Special thanks to anyone who watched the live stream with me. Most of you know I've been pounding the table for Darnell Wright since the Senior Bowl, and I kicked it into high gear all week long. I couldn't be happier with this pick. Fields got himself a new bodyguard. I will be live for part of day two tonight. The Bears have all three picks within 10 spots of each other, so I plan on going live for at least an hour, maybe two during that time, and then I'll send it off so you guys can watch with some other Bears media guys. Bottom line, I love this pick. I'm also more calm about how the rest of the draft goes now. Poles has ultimate flexibility moving forward. He addressed the one position that he really needed to address early on. Thanks so much to everybody who listens. Please remember to hit that like button for me. And if you follow me on Twitter, all I have to say about Lawrence Holmes is... I don't know how these Chicago sports guys can put these takes on national television. And then when you call them out about the take, they get personal. They have absolutely nothing to say to substantiate their football take. That's what happened on Twitter this morning. I disagreed with the take of Lawrence Holmes. And he never once tried to substantiate his take. He just attacked me personally called me a loser, a clout chaser, and all this stuff. Just absolutely mind-numbing and hilarious. That's why I don't listen to 670 The Score or most of those Chicago media outlets anymore. Those guys just don't know football, and they bring politics into things and get personal. I care about football. That's what it's all about to me at the end of the day. And no clown on Twitter is ever going to upset me. Stay tuned, guys. I have a ton more coming, including my top available targets for day two for the Chicago Bears. 
Until next time, bear down. When you're looking at offensive linemen, you want clean hands. And he's got some technique to work on. All of them do. But the one thing that I look for is if you miss with your hands and your technique's a little bit off on a certain play and you still have the ability to anchor up, even when you're wrong, you can win when you're wrong. Um, that just shows you what he's got in his body. So for us, if we can clean you know, those little details up, hand usage, angles, things like that, pad level, uh, we think the sky's the limit for him. Ryan, you said that Darnell's a tone setter. What yeah. is the tone you want him to set? He is a, he's a nasty dude who, when you watch the tape and be like, all right, we got to play the Bears next week, you go, okay, like this is going to be a long day. I think we're going tackle. I'm just, I'm hoping it's Darnell Wright. If we don't trade down, give me Darnell Wright. I'm going to tell you what, guys. If you watched my videos this week, other than Jalen Carter, there's been one guy I've really been pounding the table for this whole week. His name is Darnell Wright. He's the best right tackle in the class. He shut down Will Anderson. He's the most athletic offensive lineman in the entire draft. If we get Darnell Wright, I'm super happy. And we'll see what Philly does here. Who was the toughest guy you went against this year? Um, Probably the dude from Tennessee. Darnell Wright, huh? Yes, sir. He was really good. He's, he's legit, isn't he? Yeah, he yeah. is. Swifty in the house!